next project for the channel is this Mustang. Gonna get this thing running. It's in the middle of being done and we're gonna get it running for the guy that owns it. So the engine's already in it. New engine, new T5. Get it going for the All right, I got this fuel tank out. Just gonna, you know, like I already told you guys, just completely trying to go through this car and make sure everything's right. Um, so got the fuel tank out and then just gonna clean some stuff up in here. Um, you know, stuff like this ground cable being on the intake. Um, obviously we gotta clean up all these wires and all that stuff. I'm gonna talk this guy into MSG distributor and box, which I'll put the box over here with the coil over here, keep the coil away from the engine. Um, change out this points distributor to an MSD, so we don't have no, we don't have to deal with none of that. Um, mechanical advance, may see if we can get a, uh, these things are really tight on room, but may try to see if we can get a carb spacer on that deal, kind of separate it from the uh, intake. Gotta clean these wires up and make sure they're routed nice and out of the way. Uh, he doesn't want a heater in this car, so I'm probably gonna fabricate um, a piece of metal with some bolts that I'll weld uh, to the metal and then we'll bolt, be able to bolt it on from out here. That way he doesn't have any heat going in to the inside. Um, and I'll look at all this stuff and it's got a painless wiring system in it, but you know how that goes sometimes it's Better just to have the stock stuff and and add from from that with your own with your own stuff. But we'll look at that um, stuff like this. We'll that's like really really tight. So we will address that. And you know if this thing, I don't know what camshafts in this thing, and I don't know what compression it is. So I may have to. Uh, we'll see once we get it running. If it runs out of fuel, may have to get with Lunchy too and see. If it's just better to put like a Holly blue pump on this deal with a regulator and go that way, I personally like that way better. Um, I don't really care for the mechanical fuel pump stuff, but uh, sometimes it's just better to put that electrical pump in and uh, not worry about running out of fuel or, or having hot fuel or anything like that. So, um, but right now I'm kind of like in the teardown, what the heck, phase kind of like we did with Tess is like okay what's this for what's that for just kind of going from there and then uh then we'll start the reassembly process so, so a lot of this stuff may be time lapsed I'm sure a lot of you guys like this isn't going to be like a super in-depth but you know I'll talk about what I'm doing it ain't going to be like a tremendous super high in-depth deal um I'm trying to get this thing done so he can drive it. So, a lot of it will be time lapsed.
we'll put the battery on a charger and let it charge for a second. I haven't looked at the valves. They look like they were adjusted correctly. Hydraulic roller. I'll pull number one out. Go through the firing order and make sure we're not 180 out. But I'll get the charger going and then we'll go from there. Alright, uh, we weren't 180 out, maybe just the timing was quite a ways off, or it could be the valves are not adjusted right, but uh, we'll try it again, see what happens, and uh, here we go. All right, as you can see, every time we try to start it, it's blowing fire out the carburetor. So I'm gonna run the valves real quick and make sure that they're not too tight. And uh, go from there, we'll run the valves and then try it again. I don't know what camshaft is in this deal, but what I'm doing is I'm just gonna set these things to zero lash. So no three quarter turn pad, zero lash, just zero lash, and then we'll go from there. Um, motor's been sitting for a while too, a couple years I think. So it's fine, we'll go zero lash on these deals and that'll be that. Now what, the way I do it and the way you can do it with any other engine is I always, We'll run the, say like uh, the exhaust valve, I'll run it all the way down so it's at full lift and then I'll adjust the opposite side or vice versa. If the exhaust valve is all the way open and this is all the way down, then I'll adjust the other one um, and go all the way down that way. That way is easier to me. It assures that um, you're on the base circle of the camshaft for the other side. So it's the way I like to do it. Yeah, I'm sure there's other ways other people like to do it, but it's the way I like to do it. Run the set screw out 
off quite a ways here. Again, this is the way I like to do it. See the rocker on them, she's got lots of play. And then I'll run this down. Once you can, keep, basically can't turn the push rod, that's their lash. And then the way I like to do this, is I'll get it right there. Run the set screw back in. Lock it down that way. And I give it just a little extra. And that one's done. And then so on and so forth. <coughs> that ain't what we wanted.
Well, it runs. It does run. Uh, I got oil leaking, I think from the valve cover. I see it all over the shock tower and it's dripping on the ground. See it down there? The oil or the fuel pump is leaking like you wouldn't believe. Really bad. I don't understand why I've got to turn the shiver that far, but we'll have to figure that out when I time it. Almost burned the motherfucker down because the fuel, the carburetor was leaking and there was a big pool of fucking gas down there. That's why I douched it. Um, big old puddle down here, which now that the car's been running, the carburetor isn't leaking. I don't know. Um, definite exhaust leaks but if you could see some of these bolts are either not all the way tight or they're all the way into the head and they're bottomed out in the head and they can't get tightened anymore so I'm gonna have to dress that because that's pretty loud and she smokes a lot uh, out the exhaust but kind of crazy a year ago today I was starting the black car over there to go to drag week today this one started so that's good that makes me feel better i can have a few more beers i'm gonna go have some dinner with my family and yeah by the way i followed the wiring for this painless wiring and uh i guess i misunderstood that this wire here that's supposed to go to the eye is not needed and i had these two initially together but i thought they both had to go here so i got that fixed this is the amp meter i'm not gonna hook that up until he puts an amp gauge in the cluster because it's updated to a 3G and apparently it'll burn the uh, amp meter out because that's like 130 amp or 150 amp. But uh, yeah, sorry I had to douche it. You guys probably think I'm a dipshit, but you know, I intend to burn all this shit down. And you can never be have too many fire extinguishers. So... I'll get it cleaned up, no worry about that, but uh, you know, this car, um, the timing pointer was gone, so we had to put one over here, a new one, and I had to find top dead center and all that stuff. Um, gosh, just so much work, fan on this radiator, I mean, stuff like the gas pedal wasn't even bolted to the firewall. I had to make a couple little plates because he's not going to have any of that stuff but you know all that heat and stuff's going to go inside real easy and real quick uh maybe once the car is ran and that sits for a minute it'll seal up um exhaust underneath i'll show you guys underneath fits okay flow master not really happy with the back back here i need new this one slow charge and let that charge put a battery in the back um, I've had to go through his, some of the stuff that he wired and kind of moved stuff around. It was all kind of zip tied together and had confused me, but I think I've sorted all that out. All right, y'all, it is the next day, Saturday, September 11th. I cleaned up my mess and changed all of the header bolts to shorter bolts. The bolts were too long, so they were bottoming out in the head and not I'm not uh, squishing the header against the head. Um, and then kept having an oil leak and found on the driver's side valve cover, there was a little washer when this thing had cork gaskets. Somehow it was still in there and it wouldn't, the uh, valve cover wouldn't seal, so it was leaking oil everywhere. So I got that set the timing I'm gonna start it and let it run um, hopefully till the thermostat opens and uh, yeah so let's do it
this is gonna be a long ass video, but uh, engine is good, starts good, timed good, all that. Now we're gonna start on the front suspension. This guy's got some lowering springs, new shocks, and some bushings that we're gonna put on for him. <clears throat> and then uh, this thing will be ready to go back to its home. So probably gonna put you on a time lapse so I can listen to some music. And um, if you want, uh, ask questions in the comments and um, I may stop and film some stuff, but most of it's probably gonna be on a time lapse. you guys so got the front suspension apart in the Mustang and everything is uh, you know from 1966 it's all rotted and uh, the guy got a pro thing kit but it's missing some of the stuff like for the spring purge um, the upper control arms the shaft that goes through the top is is no good and um, like the ball joint, no good. So he gave me the go ahead. We're gonna run down to Ventura to National Parts Depot. Looks like they have everything in stock that we need. That way I'm not waiting for a week or two for it to get shipped. Um, I can buzz down here, grab what I need, come back. The only thing they didn't have was the upper control arm. So I'm basically just gonna rebuild the, the stock one and I'll have the arm blasted so there's no rust or anything on it, and then I'll paint them and uh, re, you know put them all together with with new parts. So here we go. drive we made it brought my uh, road dog with me so I'm letting him use the restroom We are back and I've got all the suspension out of the Mustang. You know, the only thing I couldn't get at National Parts Depot that they didn't have were the upper control arms. So we're gonna rebuild the ones that I have, the stock ones with uh, the new spring perch. Um, they make like a, what is this thing called? Uh, these right here, control arm shaft kit. And then new, um, ball joint so everything's out I'm getting ready to take some parts to the sandblaster um, might be wondering what the heck yeah I do things a little different so this is a ground you know from the engine and what I do is I put like a hole in the frame and then I'll weld this stud to a piece of flat bar and then I'll weld that to the frame that way there's always good ground and then this runs all the way back uh, still gotta get this stuff all tidied up here but this runs all the way back to the ground here and I did the same thing back here so this comes from the battery grounds and then uh, six gauge I think it goes all the way up to the front so um, Got the lowering blocks on the back, new bushings in the leaf springs in the front and rear, new shocks. I gotta tighten up the shocks. Um, he's already got these aftermarket disc brake kit on this thing, so 
this isn't my work somebody else's work not mine but um, we are very close uh, here is the uh, throw out bearing the fork clutch fork that I extended you can see it's about that far and then this deal here which bolts into the T5 bell housing and just extends it if not trying to get the clutch cable to come through here it was just gonna be right on the header so I extended it the action feels good when you're in the car um, I've yet to start it and let the clutch out but as you can see it's a lot more of a straight shot comes right down a little close to the header there but goes right in catch is really nice so uh, I will get all these parts sandblasted. I will get uh, inside here. All this stuff needs to be cleaned. It's filthy dirty. Uh, I'm going to clean all that stuff up and get all of this, you know, cleaned up as best I can and then get all the front suspension back together. And this baby is, is ready to rock and roll. So, T5 in this car uh, kit. I'm going to put some nuts here yet. Uh, this is a kit from CJ Pony Parts, I think. But T5, gotta get the drive shaft put together too. A T5 kit. But as you can see, I'll show you the parts here of the stuff we're gonna take and get sandblasted. These are all the parts. So, got the strut rods, sway bar. This is a thing that bolts underneath. It's like Falcons and stuff, or some 600 cars don't have that. Uh, these go on the strut bars and then the control arm upper. Gonna get all that stuff blasted so that everything's nice and Alright y'all, it's uh, Friday and powder coater called in less than a day. He got all the stuff done, so we had the control arms done, the sway bar, strut bars, the little brackets at the end of the strut bars, and uh, the little cross member. So let's take a look. So here's the strut bars, uh, the cross member that goes underneath, a couple control arms. Um, stuff is not good. No rust, no grease. There's a rock and roll. Put all the, I'll put all the new stuff in these, the new perch. Um, ball joint and uh, shaft. You're ready to go. And then this is the sway bar. And uh, I'll clean all that stuff like I showed, I think I showed earlier. I'll clean all this stuff out and get some paint in here. Looks like somebody's already undercoated. I'll get some paint down here on this stuff that's kind of rusty. And um, we'll get all the suspension back in this bad boy. And one step closer uh, for this guy to be able to drive this thing. All right, we are making progress. I've got the lower control arms on already and the sway bar and the strut bar. So I'll show you what we got right here. So the lower control arm is on. Uh, I started with putting the lower control arm on first, then the strut bar, everything's loose. Um, sway bar, and then I'll start working up here. A lot of people take this out when they're doing this, but this is, has a, a lowering spring that we're putting in it. And I don't think it's gonna be an issue to get it up in the, in the bucket there. But I've got everything loose. And I'll, that's what I'll do until I get it all together. I'll keep everything loose and then I'll tighten everything up. I just got done cleaning this stuff as best as I could. As you know, when it's got the bar that goes across here, they, there's two Zert fittings and they grease them. Well, that grease over time, you know, comes down and this just collects uh, dirt, stuff like that. So I got those cleaned out best I can. And uh, strut bars lower control arm so 
I'll probably set you guys up on a time lapse and I guess you can watch me work. There's a lot of other videos on YouTube on how to do this, uh, early Ford stuff. So, unfortunately this video is not really to give you like a how-to. Um, it's just kind of showing you what I'm doing on this car. So, if you're looking for a video specifically for this, I'll try to link something up top here um, with somebody that's taken it apart, kind of slow it down and give you a how-to, but this that's not this video. Like I said, I'm just trying to bang this thing out so that this guy can take this car. time lapse and the battery died so you guys missed everything I had the good music playing and you guys missed but I'll show you what what we got all right so we got the upper control arms they're all rebuilt the new spring perch new shocks new low lower uh, coil springs uh, new lower control arms so New lower control arms, and then you guys already saw the strut and the sway bar. So, I also powder coated the this thing too. Got the other side done. I got to do some cleaning. Got a little scratch right there. I had a really hard time getting the spring perch in on that side. Don't know why, but it was very hard to get. But now I just gotta clean this thing up. Uh, new shocks, some new hardware up top, new isolator, spring ice, isolator in there. Oh, this bad boy is about ready to rock and roll. I don't got much to do now, very little. Dang, this is a long ass video. First day off, just got out into the shop, had some coffee and breakfast sandwich. It's 10 a.m. and the goal for today is to get the Mustang done. There's a few little things that need to be done, like a brake line, um, the U-joints for the drive shaft. Uh, one of the biggest things is the fuel pump uh, leaks. So let me show you what I got. So I took this thing apart because whenever it would run, it, it would leak fuel. And obviously it, it's leaking right here. I could, you can, this stuff is just peeling away. Don't know why, but gonna get another pump and put it on there. And then if he needs to upgrade it later, he always can to like a Holly Blue pump with a regulator. That's what I like, like I said, way back earlier in this long ass video. <clears throat> That's what I like better, but um, spent a lot of money on this car. And I think that this gentleman just wants to uh, slow down on spending money and drive it and so that's what we're gonna do put another mechanical pump in it and a little odds and ends to get this thing done and out of here so uh follow along for today and we'll this will uh should complete working on the car in the video and i may even include us delivering it and then uh that'll conclude this long ordeal so follow along September 25th at 6.09 p.m. Pacific time. And I am done with the Mustang. 
for what he's having me do. Still needs interior, still needs wiring. The wiring harness is in the car, but it needs the interior stuff hooked up, tail lights, headlights, but for what I'm doing, which has been a bunch, um, all new bushings in the rear suspension, lowering blocks, new shocks, um, exhaust, gas tank, fuel line, uh, nut certs to hold the fuel line, all new front suspension as you've seen, um, getting the engine to fire and run, um, it was missing like the timing pointer, MSD box, make a throttle, um, not a cable but a throttle rod for the gas pedal to the carburetor, a lot of shit. Um, just bled the brakes. It's got some CJ Pony Parts brake kit on it. Uh, I don't really know about that thing. But I was able to get pressure on the pedal. Um, I don't know. Seems kind of seems kind of weird, but I'm going to start all the shit and get shit out of the way and maybe take this thing around the block just to see how the clutch works. I've never even got to check the clutch after... Uh, making the bracket and all that stuff so we are going to try to get it out and get it around the block uh, before we lose sunlight i gotta move all my junk out of the way that car and the focus out there but we are ready to try it Mustang's got no seat, so I guess I'm gonna use pillows. I'll figure it out. Here we go. Brakes on this car make me nervous.
but it's a little jolty, so with the camera. So I'm not in a seat. Alright, it's Sunday. I think today's the 26th. And the Mustang is done up to this point. After taking it for a drive yesterday, I told the guy I would, this has like a CJ Pony Parts brake kit, junk. I told him maybe look into like a Wheelwood or Aerospace or something like that. Cause he wants to drag race this car. And also told him to take a look at the rear end and maybe go like an 8.8 out of an Explorer type deal. This has an eight inch deal and they're not very strong they break easy and with the price of those explorer ends pretty much go get one with 31 spine axles and um have the one side shortened and uh that's what i would do so it's got a few things yet and like i said last night clutch cable is a little sticky it's got something going on it's kind of frayed it was frayed when i got it i think just driving around the block stretched it out so it could do for like a, a better clutch cable whatever's a good clutch cable that's what i would do but um waiting for the tow truck to come get it and uh, then we'll follow the tow truck out to the guy's house and drop this thing off mm -hmm. 